Wisdom. 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 Reading from the Hebrew Scriptures from the Old Testament, I'll be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, and I'll be reading, actually I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 8. I think in the bulletin and on the screen it'll have verses 2 through 8, so I'm going to read, I forgot to put an extra verse in there when I wrote it down, so uh, bear with me here. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. And then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, Surely I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. And so the sun returned ten degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of this is most holy and precious word. Amen. I heard a joke this week, I gotta tell you. See if I can tell you. <laughs> I should let Judy tell you, but she's better at these than me. There was this fellow that got stranded on a deserted island and he was there for 20 years, by himself, on a deserted island. After some 20 years, all of a sudden this ship comes by and, and they saw smoke from this fire or something and they came down and brought a boat in to rescue him and he was so glad to see him. He said, oh, finally I can get off this island. And they said, how long have you been here? And he said, 20 years. He said, wow. He said, you want to see some of the things I've done to survive? And they said, sure. And so we took them back a little farther into the, into the woods there, the jungle. And all of a sudden, there was this big house. And they said, what's that house? And he said, well, I built that house. That's mine. You know, 20 years is a long time. And I, I really finished it pretty nicely, actually. It's got a lot of, uh, not everything like back home, but I built a really nice house. And so I've been fairly comfortable here. And then they said, well, there's a building next to it. What was, what's that? And he said, well, that's my church. I built a church while I was here because we all need to worship God and to thank him for all the blessings. And then they looked and said, hey, there's another building next to that. What's that? And he said, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Only guy there. Right? <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> It says a lot about a lot of things, actually. Oh, my. Anybody read the book of Hezekiah lately? You know, there's a story about the preacher. He said, I want you all to go home and read the book of Hezekiah for next week. And uh, be sure to read it. Came back the next week and the preacher said, how many of you read the book of Hezekiah? All these hands go up. You know, they didn't want to be left out. Preachers asking us questions. These hands go up. And he said, I'm going to be preaching on lying today. <laughs> and there is no book of Hezekiah. <laughs> but Hezekiah was a great king over Judah, the southern kingdom. Israel, you know, was 
split in two after the days of Solomon, and the northern kingdom was known as Israel, and the southern kingdom known as Judah. That's why when you read through the book of Kings, it will say, when so-and-so was the king of Israel, somebody became the king of Judah. That confused me for the longest time, until I realized there were two separate kingdoms. If you read through the book of Kings, you're not going to find very many good kings that were in Israel or Judah in those days. Very few. Almost every one of them says, and he did what was wrong in the sight of the Lord. Over and over and over again. There were a couple good ones. Hezekiah was a good one. His father Ahaz was a really bad one. Ahaz shut down all the worship of the Lord. He said, we're not going to worship the Lord anymore. We're going to worship, oh, the fun gods. The gods of all the nations around us that are kind of fun when you party, when you worship those gods. You don't have to give anything. You don't have to sacrifice anything. It's party time. It's kind of like uh, America today. So we just have fun. And Ahaz even shut the doors of the temple and locked them and said, no one's allowed to go in there anymore. He said, anybody who worships the Lord, they'll be booted out of the temple. We're going to worship the gods of the other nations. They even promoted the worship. If you remember last week we talked about uh, the bronze serpent that Moses made and lifted up in the wilderness so that the people would live if snakes bit them and they would look up and then how Jesus said I must be lifted up as the bronze serpent was lifted up this very important uh, icon for the people they began to worship that they made temples for that and they would go and they would sacrifice and, and party around uh, the bronze serpent. Not God, but worshiping that serpent. Hezekiah came along and somehow, in God's grace, he didn't have the ways of his father. He was more like his grandfather who was a fairly decent king. You know, there's hope for us and our grandchildren. <laughs> If, if Hezekiah had been like Ahab, it would have been really bad, but he took long after his grandfather. And Hezekiah said, we have really done wrong. And he opened the temple up, and he had the priest come in and, and, and reclaim the temple and promote the worship of the Lord God again. And he took that bronze serpent and he burned it because it had become a symbol of unhealthiness for the people. And that's something, something that once was special and holy, it becomes the thing that's worship. And so it loses its meaning and its power. And as the guys said, that must be destroyed, and they did. And it was a good thing. Hezekiah reached out to the northern kingdom, and he said, none of us have, has had Passover for 300 years. People forgot about Passover since the days of Solomon. How could they have done that? Even when they worshiped, they didn't carry out the Passover. And he said, come on, I want you, we're going to have Passover. Come on down and join us. And some of the tribes of the northern kingdom came down. And there was a, a unity and a goodness in the land because of Hezekiah. But as it often happens, even in our world today and in our families and in our lives, bad things happen to good people. And Hezekiah got sick. And he got really sick. And the prophet Isaiah came to him and said, I, I don't want to tell you this, but I have bad news for you. You know, sometimes you go to the doctor and he says, I have bad news for you. Isaiah came and said, this, is, this illness is unto death. You will not recover from this. And he left. Then it was that Hezekiah 
says he turned to the wall. Now that can have different meanings for some people. For, for many of us, it might mean we're in our bed and we turn to the wall and we just pray and we cry and, and everything else. And that may have been what he did. For other people who remember uh, the glory days of, of Jerusalem and, and the days of David and Solomon, uh, there is what we call the Wailing Wall. And people go there even today and put prayers in that wall. It's covered all these big cracks in the stone, just filled with prayers. And so when I think of it, I think of that. And I'll be praying for some of you when I go to Israel in November and put some prayers in the walls. The Wailing Wall, the Western Wall of the Temple. But whatever wall it was that he turned to, he prayed. And he said, Lord, you have forgiven my sins, you've done so much for me, and, and I've tried to lead a good life, and, and, and whatever is left of my life, I just I give it to you, and I devote it to you. And it says he wept with bitter tears, realizing the frailty of life, and even how, uh, when it seems like we're going along so good, something just stops us right in our tracks, and we're faced with mortality, and he wept bitterly. And then it was that the word of the Lord came to him. Even different than what the prophet had said. But the word of the Lord, because God is God, and he says, I am going to extend your life. I have heard your prayer. And I'm going to extend your life by 15 years at the time. Because I've had pity on you. And I want to show the people that Miracles in heaven. And that is a sign of what I'm going to do for you. And that I am the God of Israel. That these other gods are not the gods that they think they are. I'm going to make the sun go backwards. Now that's a miracle in itself. He said, you know, in fact then they had different kinds of sundials. Some of them were like steps. And the, the sun would move and the shadow on the steps would go down as the day progress. He says, I want you to go out and watch the steps of Ahaz, your father, that he built as a sundial. And I want to watch you see what I'm going to do because it will be a sign for you that what I'm going to promise you, what I have promised you, will surely happen. As the tide went out and as he began to watch, the sun began to go backwards. And the shadow that was down here began to go back up. Isn't that amazing? The Lord who created earth and sky not only stopped everything in its tracks, but made it go backwards. Now scientists would say that's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. 